Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest iteration of the web series, The Nature of Predators. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 103 Memory Transcription Subject Captain Sovlin, United Nations Fleet Command Date, Standardized Human Time, December 7th, 2136 It was tough to cope with my proximity to this predator and his vendal pal. I was standing just within the room's threshold and resisting the urge to flee. Binocular eyes were trained to my skull. It felt like they were burning holes in my head. My eyes wandered, attempting to look at anywhere but the human scarred face. Marcel had placed a photograph of Slinek and himself alongside a female Terran I didn't recognize. The curious aspect was a young Gojud riding on the redhead's back with bright eyes. In my victim was tickling her wrists, twisting his hands over his shoulders. Even in a still photograph, I could tell the child was squealing with happiness. Why were Marcel and Slenek taking pictures of the young Gojid? Didn't the redhead human despise our species? Just looking at the child must remind him of my likeness. I wasn't sure why he'd volunteer with our refugees. Perhaps it was an attempt at coping for him. But the fact that he kept it as a selected photo... Marcel thinks of his time with the Gojit as a kid as a happy memory. How can that be? My throat felt like it was made of sandpaper. Uh, the the Gojit, uh, who is she? That's Nuria, my adopted daughter, Marcel replied in an even voice. Slendek and I rescued her on the cradle after she was abandoned in a stampede. She's back at home with my fiancé now. I recoiled, unable to process why the human would adopt a Gojit child. Peering into his eyes at a photograph, the scar predator was radiating affection. His teeth were bared in full snarl, and Slinek was cozied up against his side too. Protector. Why couldn't I have tortured an arsehole Terran? Not that it would have made him more moral, but Marcel was too kind. I could not have harmed someone less deserving of cruelty. My eyes burned as images of Marcel and a collar flooded my mind. Staring at his heartfelt smile, I could still picture his strained smile when Slenek came to visit. It had been my claw that pressed the shock trigger, while staring at him in absolute reproach. The cold, starving predator had seized on the floor and struggled just to breathe. I could still hear his screams as I kicked him in the ribs. Slenek snapped the television show off and fixed a withering glower on me. The venal eyed me with murderous intent, flexing his wounded arm as if to test it. Marcel's best friend remembered the exact details I had. I could remember how desperate he was to plead the human's case. My response was to try to get him preyed upon. I would have intervened before the predator could eat the venal, but at least it was an attempt to traumatize him. Besides, there was no guarantee that I could react quicker than a hunter could lunge. Poor Marcel must have resisted such terrible thoughts just looking at Slenek. It felt immoral to sympathize with the predator's bloodlust, but I knew that he could unhelp basic biological urges. Marcel chose to die rather than eat his friend, and that was a remarkable show of willpower. The fact that he hadn't enacted revenge upon me showed he was a good person. His love extended even to Gojit children. The red-haired human shot Slinek a pointed look. Tell Sovereign what you wanted to tell him. This hatred is poisoning your heart, and you need to let it out. Yay! Fucking hate you. If Russell hadn't intervened, you would have killed Marcel. You meant to put him down like a fucking animal. The Vendel screeched. Did you, you know how it felt to feel like I'd lose him? To know the last moments were agony. You deprived him of every basic need. I suppose he was lucky you gave him filthy water in a filthy bucket. I'm sorry, I offered meekly. What good does that do? You're out living a respected life with the Terran military, and the trauma can never be undone. My government never even got to prosecute you for how you tossed me around. Then I was helpless as he clung to life. On the day-long trip to Venla Prime, I sat beside his hospital bed, watching them put wires into his face. Saw the pictures. Terrible to look at. It was terrible. I don't know how you got Tyler to feel sorry for you, but he was never the brightest bulb in the box. You can keep your fecking apologies, because you aren't worth shit. The Venal started to sit up, but Marcel held him back with an arm. Slenek wriggled against the restraint, yet for some reason, the human wouldn't let him charge at me. The prey alien reached for his ivy line, and the predator intercepted his paws with nimble reflexes. 
I'd never seen a vendor bare his teeth or act with such aggression. There was no question I deserved special animosity. Even the galaxy's weakest race wanted to bash my face in, and I couldn't blame him. Everything Slanek had just said was true, down to the fact that I would have murdered an innocent creature without Rusal. The tears poured out of my eyes, and that only enraged the vendor further. I pressed my face into my paws, wishing that I could fall into non-existence. Relax, buddy. It's okay, Marsal whispered. Slanek pinned his ears back. Stop! I should be comforting you. He did it to you. You're the one who has to live with the trauma. You're the one who is permanently disfigured. Yes. I don't want you harming him. You told me in the hospital you wanted Solon dead. You were fantasizing about it. It wouldn't make anything better, Slanek. I've been trying to make peace with what happened to me since I learned that his family was eaten in front of him. Sovereign saved both our lives, and I don't wish harm upon him. You said you didn't want to see him. You were pissed that he was here on Celis. I was pissed. I am angry. I'm hurting. I'm hounded by memories when I look at his face, and I forgive him. What was left of my spines bristled, and the world collapsed in on me. All I wanted was for my soul to take those words back. They stabbed at me like daggers to the chest. I couldn't breathe, and every part of me screamed against that forgiveness. Everyone in the galaxy knew that Slanek's interpretation was the correct one. I didn't deserve mercy, and my life should be forfeit for my actions. How could the Predator just forgive what I had done to him? No, you can't do that, I croaked, fighting for air amid the narrowing of my vision. His hazel eyes stared directly at me. No, I can. I won't forget what you did, but it's time to let it go. I choose to feel compassion for you. I choose not to be a victim and not to let hatred control me. Marsal stated compassion, packed force with a sledgehammer. Those simplistic words echoed in my mind, boring against concrete certainty that I must never find peace. Without self loathing as my purpose, there was no guiding star to light my dark path. Forgiveness stripped my life of all meaning. There was no reason to persist another day. Why should I get to live when I couldn't protect my family? You just said you were angry. Speech spilled from my vocal cords as if born on their own volition. You wanted me dead. That was good. Why would you just forgive me? Simple. I was playing with Nulia, and she overheard me talking with Lucy. She said, Marshall, you're mean when you talk about Sean. Kid was right. I was consuming me, because I hadn't let it go. The thought lanced me. It couldn't be that simple for a predator to cast aside his vitriol. The words of a child who peered into his heart caused him to forgive old wounds. Slinek snapped his tail against Marcel's yellow. Listen to yourself. You're letting him get away with the sadism again. I don't control his actions. I control mine. And there's power in not clinging to resentment. I won't be free from this until I set my heart free. You have to stand up for yourself, Mark. It's not about being the bigger person. Justice matters too, and your life has enough value to me that he deserves my disgust. Do you believe people can change, buddy? Because I do. And it's wrong to deny a truly repentant person a second chance. Please, for my sake, respect the fact that Sovlin is trying to do better today. That's all he can do. No. Marcel is insufferable. Tyler also said I deserved a second chance, and it wasn't true then. Doesn't matter that I'm doing right by them, after what I've done already. I fell to my knees, sobbing, as I had when I first realized humans had empathy. A second chance was not what I was seeking. There was no reason why my unforgivable deeds deserved a do-over. My continued existence was meant as inadequate penance for my treatment of humanity. What aid I'd given them wasn't nearly enough though I hoped I'd made a minute difference in their war efforts. It was tempting to believe that my reparations were sufficient. I knew my die was cast and my story was written, yet I yearned to pretend that wasn't the truth. My eyes blinked open, turning to the vendor. Surely he would slap Marcel's folly down without hesitation. Fine! Slanek spat the word as if it were sour taste in his mouth. Marcel smiled with satisfaction. Good. Now, uh... Thank him for saving your life. What? How did you- Tyler told me. He explained everything rather apologetically. We would both be dead without Sovlin, so a little thanks is in order. Please. 
Don't. Snot bubbling out of my nose. I shook my head, desperate to rebuff any praise. That's uh, not necessary. I agree. Slinek contorted his facial features into a mask of disgust. You're taking this way too far, Mark. Uh, this concussion got to your head. Well then, humor a poor, sick human. The red-haired predator chuckled. I'll watch the new episode of that god-awful The Exterminator show with you. If you say thanks sincerely. Th 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 thanks, Sovlin. <laughs> that was vile. I said sincerely. I'm glad Marcel is alive. Slanek spoke through gritted teeth. Uh, thanks for not trying to slice and dice him again. You've got to be kidding me. That's the best you can do. That it was sincere, I sniffed, buying time to regain composure. Technically meet your criteria. Marcel heaves a sigh. Yeah, I guess so. Let me walk you back to your room, Sovlin. I raised a surrendering paw, stammering. No, 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 you don't. I insist. I need to be sure I didn't kickstart a full-blown mental crisis. The human maneuvered onto his legs and stretched out his body with a blood-curdling pops. His strong hands tugged at my shoulder. The extended contact made me nauseous to my stomach, and my heavy limbs were sluggish to obey. I reminded myself not to think of him as my victim. Marcel didn't want to be regarded in that fashion, so I shouldn't do him that disservice in my perception. The red-haired Terran wrapped an arm around my neck, which felt as heavy as a rock. How did every interaction with Marcel increase my guilt to chest-bursting levels? He had led me out of Slinek's quarters and asked in low rumble where I was heading. All I could do was point a few doors down, still as teary-eyed and snot-stained mess. I noticed the predator drawing deep breaths to quell his own anxiety. My self-centered concerns turned to him, and I withdrew from his grasp. Marcel blinked his eyes shut, his scars scrunching up with his grimace. I wanted to comfort him, even though I knew it was my presence ratcheting up his anxiety. Do, do, do you want a hug? My voice was hardly more than a whisper, and I watched his eyes pop open with surprise. No, no, no. I get that. Of course you don't want one from me. Marcel threw his arms around me, burying his face in my fur. The Terran finally let out tears spill over, which soaked my shoulder. I mirrored the way I'd seen Tyler comfort Onzo and pressed my paw onto his back. This was the first time I'd ever been this close to a human. Not even my uh, friends had embraced me. It was shocking how warm this predator was, like a heated blanket. No wonder Slinek always curls up next to him. It's oddly disarming. My heart ached as the human continued to bawl his eyes out. I moved my claw into his hair and ruffled the strands in the silly way that I'd do with my daughter. It wasn't clear how Terran years translated, but Marcel was probably about her age. He jerked his head back, and fear flashed in his eyes briefly. The poor guy mistook my playful gesture as an attack. Sorry, shouldn't have used my claws. It must feel like I was slicing at you. I wasn't thinking, I mumbled. Marcel patted his mane back down. It's just, uh, never mind, uh, this here is where you're heading, right? Yeah. Cool beans, uh, hey, uh, listen, I wish you only the best, uh, I don't want you to be depressed on my account. It's not on his account. It's because of me knowing what I am. The last thing I want is you worrying about me. I wasn't going to spill my emotional turmoil on this human, who could keep his own trauma contained. I wish you hated me. Well, I don't. You hate you, Sovlin. Yeah. But I don't have to be a therapist to tell you where it all stems from. You blame yourself for what happened to your family. If you want to do something for me, get help. Tyler told me about someone. I, I didn't think... That you deserve help. It's okay to be happy and live your life. You're not going to pay off some self-imposed debt to me by being miserable. I averted my gaze. Thank you. Whatever anyone says about you, you're the strongest person I've ever known. How much you care for others is astounding, and it speaks wonders of your species. Nobody is perfect. I just hope when it's all said and done, I leave the universe a better place, Marcel said. It's not too late for the sum of your actions, you know. I promise I'll try. From now on, I'll try to be like you. I'm not the worst role model, in my humble opinion. If only I could smack the same lesson into Slinek's skull, but it seems like we've settled our issues. But that's that. That's that. Good, well, uh, I think it'll best be going, uh, rest up. As the predator turned away, I wondered how I ever could have believed his species was incapable of empathy. 
The truth was, Terrans had to be one of the most empathetic species to cobble together anything bordering normalcy. It took a great deal of emotion to repress their hunting instincts with such thoroughness. Perhaps that was why they bonded with the Vendel. They both were sensitive species with ample feedings. As Carlos told me, the issue was when empathy wasn't extended to a particular individual. Marcel chose to grant it even to me, after what I had done. That was a sign of a good human. I couldn't believe how openly he was conversing with me, and how he had wiped the slate clean. The catch was that I could not, would not, forgive myself. I laid down on the floor of my room and thought about the legacy that I would leave behind. Marcel did have a point, though. The torture would always be in my ledger, but I could surround it with other deeds. Suffering was my idea of a fair punishment, not any request of the scarred primate. It wasn't going to make things right between us. If anything, it seemed like it would worsen his recovery. Maybe it was time to get my head straight, as the human so often suggested. I could become a better version of my despicable self with the Predator's guidance. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.